and welcome to the Symphony Live. I'm up here on the Navigational Bridge. Uh, we're filming just now. It's uh, 12 noon. We're Dr. Malaga. And joining me here, we've got Captain Rob. Thank you very much for allowing us to come up to the bridge, Captain. Sure. My pleasure. Um, I guess now it's our last protocol in Europe. They're up there. It's, the weather's a little bit against us. It's the time of year, etc. But the next thing they're thinking about is, okay, when we leave tonight, what's the weather going to be like as we come through the Straits of Gibraltar, heading across? We've got eight days of sea, making our way to Port Canaveral. So I'm going to hand over to Captain Rob, and uh, we'll give us a quick update on what we have in store. Go ahead, Captain. Thank you, Bonnie. Good afternoon, everybody. Captain Rob here on the Symphony of the Seas on the bridge. Uh, I know you're all very eager to hear about what the weather's going to be like, and, and I'm here to offer you uh, some of the information that I have available to us. So um, the very first few days are the ones that matter most to us at the moment. So here we are in Malaga, southern Spain. We are on the east side of the Straits of Gibraltar. We're still inside the Mediterranean and the protection of the Mediterranean. Tonight we're going to sail out of Malaga and head straight for the Straits of Gibraltar and as we pass through the Straits of Gibraltar beginning tonight around 10 p.m. or 2200 24-hour time as we re usually refer to it um, we will begin our entrance into the North Atlantic so beginning our entrance into North Atlantic midnight tonight I expect to feel some weather against us as we sail out our average speed across the Atlantic for this voyage will be about 19 knots, 19.4. So depending on how much speed we make in the beginning, we'll determine how much speed we need in the end to get to Port Canaveral on time. So here we are, day four, which is tomorrow at noon. So during the night, tonight, and then all day tomorrow, we're going to feel the effects of this huge low pressure to the north of us. My plan here is to sail across northwest of North Africa. We're heading straight southwest towards the island of Madeira, which is about 200 miles north of the Canary Islands, and southeast about almost 400 miles from the Azores. My plan is to take us down south of Madeira, and then at that point, we would have two options. We can go great circle sailing from Madeira, which would take us on a curve around the bulge in the earth and drop down to Port Canaveral. Or we can do what they call rum line, which is straight across directly to Port Canaveral. The difference between great circle and rum line is about 70 miles in this case. The reason why I've chosen two options this is, like I said, 70 miles shorter, and it can also take us in avoiding any weather to the south. In this particular case right now, I'm 99% sure we're going to take the Rum Line course, which is a more, it looks more direct, but it's actually longer because we have to go over, uh, let's say, the bulge in the earth. We are round, and the shortest distance between two points on a sphere is a great circle. And a great circle is a circle which goes completely around the Earth, exactly the opposites. So in other words, how should I say, describe it in such a way that it slices the Earth perfectly in half no matter where you put the circle on the Earth. That is a great circle, and that's the shortest distance between any two points on a sphere. A rum line will take you in a straight line to that point, but it takes a longer distance to get there. A great circle is a series of slight course changes First, uh, in this case, to the northwest, and then gradually back down to the southwest. But for us, rum line is going to take us into warmer climates. So noon, day five, I'm expecting to see a great improvement in the weather. My point is this, for the first day and a half, or 36 hours, after we sail from Malaga, we're going to have some weather. It's going to be wet. It's going to be some wind. We'll have some motion, but it won't be too bad. And if it's a little bit of extra motion, I'll slow down, adjust the course to make the ride comfortable. Just a little bit about Madeira. Madeira sits out there in the ocean all by itself, between the Azores and the Canaries. And uh, it is a port of call for cruise ships. It's very exposed to the wind and weather. And it's, uh, depending on how things go, some ships can get in there, some cannot. Uh, but it sits out there. 
as you can see on the chart, and we're going to go right by it. Depending on the weather, we may or may not be able to see it. But it has got a great history, and it was a popular uh, tourist destination, of course, and known for its wine. And it's been around for many hundreds of years, and a stepping off point for many of the old sailing ships and fishing ships from the Mediterranean back in the day. Day six at noon, you can see here, this is an interesting shot. We are well out to sea at this point, and we're quite a bit south of where we would be had we taken the northern route, the short route. You can see to the north a big low pressure area. It's huge. It's taking over the whole northern portion of the North Atlantic. And you can also see the track of what this really was, and that's Hurricane Oscar. It has curved all the way around at this point, following the forecast and heading off to the northeast towards northern Europe. There will be a swell felt from that, kind of a low following swell, which is fairly typical. But this is a great shot of the forecast. Now we are reaching out six days at this point, so as the forecast gets further and further away, it gets less and less accurate. But it's a good reference and a good idea of just about what we can expect. Here's another look at what it would look like. These are some of the uh, forecasts coming from NOAA in this particular case. And you can see Hurricane Oscar. At this point, it's a hurricane that becomes category one, and now it's down to storm force, growing and expanding as it heads to the northeast. We will be well out of its way, and I will do everything to make sure we stay out of its way. I'm going to talk more about this later, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, we'll be crossing over the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, of course, on this cruise. And uh, it's rather interesting to see what the bottom might look like were we to pull the plug on the ocean and see it for real with our own eyes. It's quite dramatic. Big mountain ranges and canyons, it's quite deep. I'll talk more about it in the coming days. I guess the plan is to give you a few forecasts as the cruise goes along. Well, there we go. Thank you very much. Actually, Todd's just running the computer up there. Todd, can we go back to, I think it was day six, I just wanted just to take a quick look there. So uh, I want to say, first of all, thank you to Captain Rob. As you can see here, we mentioned there, you can see where we're heading away from that little weather front that was there. Uh, our goal is to keep our guests in as comfortable a ride as possible. But Mother Nature, you got to respect Mother Nature at all times there. So we'll do another update, Captain, uh, maybe in about 48 hours, if that's okay. We'll come to the bridge. We got a couple of days out of Malaga. We'll give you an update here on channel number 14. I want to thank Captain Rob for allowing us to come up here onto the bridge. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Simply Live. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.